Okay, so in the last video, we talked about uh, uh, what it means for a sequence to converge, what it means for a sequence to tend to plus infinity or minus infinity, and finally a bunch of uh, takeaways or consequences based on those definitions. So today we go forward and in this video we are going to talk about uh, bounded and monotone sequences. Okay, and what, what happens, what can I say about the limit of a sequence if I additionally have some structure on the sequence, for example, either monotonicity or boundedness. Okay, so let me begin by some quick definitions. What do we mean by monotone sequences? Well, a monotone sequence is either a sequence that is increasing or decreasing, right? So let me start off with increasing a sequence xn is increasing if naturally xn plus 1 is greater than or equal to xn for all n let's say in the naturals right so for every number for every natural number if xn plus 1 is greater than or equal to xn we say that the sequence is increasing. Uh, so, uh, yeah, oftentimes uh, this condition would, uh, in more stricter terms, be called non-decreasing, but it's okay. Throughout this uh, course, when I say an increasing sequence, I mean it in the greater than equal to sense, right? Xn plus 1 is greater than or equal to Xn for all n. In that case, we are going to call the sequence an increasing sequence. Similarly, a sequence xn uh, is decreasing if xn plus 1 is less than equal to xn for all n. Right? And finally, we will say that a sequence is bounded there exists some let's say positive number m such that the absolute value of xn is less than m for all n right so a sequence is bounded if every value that the sequence taken in absolute value is less than some m where m is some you know positive number Okay, again, very natural definitions. Now we will look, start looking at some consequences of these with relation to the definition of uh, limit of a sequence. Okay, so our first result uh, is the following. We will say that all convergent sequences are in fact bounded. Uh, I guess the all is redundant. We can just say convergent sequences Right? So, any sequence that converges is necessarily bounded. Okay, So, the proof is actually fairly straightforward. I'm going to again leave this as an exercise to you. Uh, when I say it's an exercise to you, even if it seems, uh, even if it seems uh, natural to you, uh, it is instructive that you actually write down the proof formally. Right? This is getting practice for just writing down a clean argument from start to finish is extremely important. So even if you think, even if you agree with me that this proof is uh, easy, nonetheless, I expect that you will write it down on your own. Intuitively, uh, the reason for this to work is fairly straightforward, right? So the fact that a sequence is convergent, sorry, yes, would imply that uh, if I take epsilon to be 1, for example, then beyond a certain n naught, every entry of the sequence is bounded between x plus 1 and x minus 1. Right, so that gives you a clean bound on if all entries greater than or equal to n, n naught. So when it comes to the remaining entries from x1 through x n naught minus 1, well, one just has to take a maximum of all of these to get an upper bound and a minimum of all of these to get a lower bound, right? So patch these two things together and you should easily be able to show that convergent sequences are necessarily bounded. Okay, so a natural question that comes up after this is, is the converse true? Are bounded sequences... Uh, convergent the 
right? And a moment's thought should hopefully convince you that the answer is no, right? You can easily come up with uh, examples of sequences which are bounded, uh, but in fact not convergent, right? Typical example is the notion of the, is the example of the divergent sequences that uh, I gave in the last video where xn is minus 1 raised to n. Now this is clearly a bounded sequence and it's clearly not convergent, right? So what we do know is that convergent sequences are bounded. Not all bounded sequences are convergent. However, it turns out that if you also add monotonicity on top of boundedness, then we end up having convergence. So that's kind of uh, the rest of what we will conclude in this video. If one also has monotonicity, then we get convergence. Okay, so in other words, when you have monotonicity as well as boundedness, it turns out that your sequence is guaranteed to converge, as we will show in the next result. Okay, so your theorem statement is all monotone bounded or monotone bound bounded monotone sequences converge. So if you have a sequence that is uh, both bounded as well as monotone, you are guaranteed that it converges. This, if you think about it, is our first example of where we are able to use some structural information about a sequence to argue that it converges. In other words, that, it, that a limit exists without being able to explicitly identify it. If you go back to our definition of convergence that we have seen so far, uh, to claim that a sequence is convergent, you also had to in fact identify the limit of the sequence. This is our first example of a result where uh, we are able to claim convergence without uh, necessarily identifying the limit. Although the proof as we will see will in fact identify uh, the limit itself. So let uh, xn be a monotone increasing sequence. Right? Uh, we have to consider two cases after all. We have to look at monotone increasing sequences and monotone decreasing sequences. Sorry, uh, what did I say? Monotone increasing. See, yeah, it's a monotone increasing and bounded sequence. Right? So in other words, we have to look at bounded increasing and bounded decreasing sequences for the purpose of this proof. Yes. So now, so I'll just consider the case of bounded increasing. Bounded decreasing is follows along similar lines and so that's an argument. That's, a, that's an exercise for you. Let S denote the set of values taken by the sequence. Okay, now this S is clearly bounded from above because the sequence is bounded. Right, so think about this, S is the set of all values taken by the sequence. The fact that the sequence is bounded implies that the set S is bounded, in particular S is bounded from above. The fact that S is bounded from above, it follows from the least upper bound property of the rails that if you look at the soup of S, this is in fact a real number. Right? And now my claim is in fact that the sequence actually converges to this alpha, which is the soup of S. 
So in the case of a sequence which is uh, monotone increasing and bounded, it turns out that the limit is in fact simply the supremum of the set of all values taken by the sequence. Okay, so how do I go about proving this? Suppose I'm given any epsilon greater than zero. We know that alpha minus epsilon is not an upper bound of S. Right? Because alpha is after all the least upper bound, which means for any positive epsilon, alpha minus epsilon is not an upper bound, which implies that there exists some number n naught such that x n naught is in fact greater than alpha minus epsilon. Okay, so there should be some entry of the sequence, which I'm going to call n naught, such that x n naught is in fact greater than alpha minus epsilon which implies from the monotonicity of the sequence that uh, xn is in fact greater than alpha minus epsilon for all n greater than or equal to n0. Clearly, right? Because all entries to the right of n0 are also going to be greater than alpha minus epsilon because it's a monotone increasing sequence. Uh, trivially, we also have that xn is going to be less than alpha plus epsilon for all n greater than or equal to n0. Why? Because alpha is after all an upper bound. So xn is going to be less than or equal to alpha for all n. So clearly you're going to be strictly less than alpha plus epsilon. And so patching these things together, we conclude that absolute value of xn minus alpha is in fact going to be less than epsilon for all n greater than or equal to n0. Right? And that indeed shows that uh, for every epsilon, I can give you an n0 such that beyond n0, the, end, the values taken by the sequence are going to be within epsilon distance away from uh, alpha. Since this can be done for any positive epsilon arbitrary, uh, we have by definition that xn converges to alpha. Right? Uh, so that completes this side of the argument. The case of a monotone decreasing sequence let's say a decreasing bounded sequence uh, follows along similar lines. I think that's an exercise. Alright, so uh, what have we seen so far? So far what we have said is that uh, convergent sequences are bounded, right? Bounded sequences by themselves are not necessarily convergent. However, bounded monotone sequences are convergent. Specifically, there are two types of bounded monotone sequences. Either you have bounded increasing or bounded decreasing. In the case of bounded increasing sequences, we have just shown that the limit is in fact going to be the supremum of the set of values taken by the sequence. In the case of bounded decreasing sequence, as you will show as part of the exercise I have just given you, you will show that the limit is in fact the infimum of uh, the set of all values taken by the sequence. Right. Uh, so one concluding uh, observation we will again make. This is to do with monotone sequences that are in fact not bounded. If my sequence is unboundedly increasing, then xn tends to infinity. If my sequence is unboundedly decreasing, then xn tends to minus infinity. Okay? So remember, if you have an increasing sequence, uh, for an increasing sequence, again, there are two possibilities. 
either the increase so all increasing sequences are obviously bounded from below right they are bounded by bill from below by just x1 so if you have an uh, increasing sequence you have two possibilities either the sequence is bounded from above in which case the sequence is convergent from the previous theorem or the sequence is unbounded from above in which case the present theorem tells you that xn tends to plus infinity similarly when it comes to decreasing sequences there are only two possibilities decreasing sequences are always bounded from above trivially right so all that remains is you can either have decreasing sequences that are bounded from below or decreasing sequences that are unbounded from below by the previous theorem decreasing sequences that are bounded from below actually do converge whereas what this theorem tells you is that if you have a decreasing sequence which is unbounded from below then the sequence tends to minus infinity okay so the proof of this is again uh, going to be an exercise to you it's actually a fairly straightforward illustration of uh, just the definition of what it means to tend to infinity and minus infinity right all th i want to stress here is the overall takeaway right uh, the overall takeaway here is that if any sequence is monotone then its limit exists necessarily in either in the extended reals let's call the sequence xn then limit this in okay so within the space of extended reals every monotone sequence has a limit again remember i didn't say every monotone sequence is convergent because as i emphasized in the previous video convergence is something that we reserve uh, for those sequences where the limit is in fact real valued okay so if a sequence is monotone then in fact the limit exists uh, within the extended reals if it is bounded monotone then in fact the sequence is also convergent which means the limit is in fact real valued okay so we have looked basically at the interplay between uh, the limit of a sequence and boundedness and uh, monotonicity in this video in the next video we will define the concepts of lim soup and lim inf